Honestly, I don't think I've ever been this hyped to do a minigame in RuneScape. So I'm standing here at the Shattered Worlds minigame. And I'm actually going to start this video off by doing this minigame quite a bit. And uh, probably focus a lot of this video on this minigame. Because it is a pretty good combat experience working towards that 120 magic. As well as I need a lot of anima to buy both the bladed dive ability and the salt in the wounds ability. And I might be buying some other stuff as well. I have to look into these rewards a bit more the slayer masks seems pretty good but they are very expensive as well as just buying maybe huge slayer experience lamps for 6 million anima each could be a pretty viable method of training slayer up to 110 for that magister again then boost of course with the wild pies but um, before I start the video I do have a discord if you want to join that link to that is always at the top of my description but let's get into the shattered worlds mini game so if you're wondering how this works, you can actually get free gear and free food, but it's only up to level 60. So if you're doing this at level 60, that could be a very good option by just ticking these boxes. But because I have way better gear than that and food, I am just not going to take any of them. And I have never done this before, so I only have world 1 to 5 unlocked. And then you start this and you're going to get these mutators. And it is, you will heal a small amount of life each time you damage an enemy. So basically Vampir's Mara. And there's, by the way, going to be different ones every time, I think. Enemies bleed anima currency when you damage them. That sounds pretty good as I need uh, to farm anima. You have a small chance on hit to feel epic, gaining unlimited adrenaline for the next 10 seconds. Also very strong. I'm going to take this one. And then basically these are going to be super easy because it is only world 1. You go in here and you have to clear 75% of all the mobs. And as you can imagine, when the mobs are a bit higher level, it is going to be pretty good combat experience to actually do this. Because they are pretty stacked mobs. So this is obviously very easy. You can see here the anima stacking up. And uh, if I do this world super fast and, you know, it goes really smooth, which is going to be the case on low levels, I might be able to do like 7 or 8 or 10 next time instead of just uh, one step higher on a floor. Instead of, you know, from just 5 to 6, it is going to be jumping me up even higher so I can progress to the higher worlds that give a lot more anima and is a lot harder to do. As you can see in the chat, I skipped three worlds, so if I just continue now, it is going to give me another one. Collect electric orbs to deal AoE damage to enemies. Damage dealt is increased with more charges. Killing an enemy has a chance to give you buff some stats. Okay, it's whatever. I'm just going to take this one. This doesn't really matter that much, and you can see I'm already in world 5 now. Getting that 63 million anima for an ability is definitely not going to be a big deal. You get a lot more anima the uh, further you get in and I'm at world 40 now out of 100 I do believe and I've got 2.5 million anima. But it has been, uh, okay there's XP drops over it now but I think it's like 38 minutes now. But uh, of course probably like 25 minutes of that I barely got more than like 300,000 anima. So it is definitely ramping up quite a bit and when I do get to those world 90 to 100 which is I think supposed to be the best anima then we can really see what the true rate of anima is. So I actually died and I am having some trouble actually doing 80 to 85. I think it's because I'm using magic and I'm not that used to it. They're doing so much damage to me and I have to complete 81 to 85 to be able to get to the last one. Or maybe there's another one after that. But uh, I want to do get to, to those 90 to 100 worlds that give the most anima. By the way, just climbing up to 85 has given me... 73 almost 74 million anima so i can actually already buy the bladed dive ability so uh, i'm going to do that now we have the bladed dive and that is right there in the melee and i do need oh two one hands but it doesn't drain any adrenaline it just gives adrenaline i guess so that is a very nice ability and if i just take out two one hands here do i even have two one hands maybe i can just uh wait give me a sec i'm gonna find two one hands Pretty scuffed one hand setup, this is why I'm grinding for the Kopesh or the Drygors of course, but uh, yeah, let's uh, show this now. So let's use the Blade the Dive ability, charging forward and then you can just surge as well. So you have basically a double surge and I'm pretty sure this does damage as well. Yeah, dash forward striking the enemies around you, 25 to 125 ability damage. So yeah, it is pretty nice and also cooldown is reset if enemy any enemy is hit die within the six seconds so yeah if you use this actually for shattered worlds this is probably super useful 
I feel like with my current gear setups, uh, melee is definitely the easier one. By the way, don't worry, I'm using a bunny because uh, I just don't have any other familiars right now. Otherwise, I wouldn't really be bringing a bunny normally. But um, yeah, I think melee is going to be the way and uh, now I can work towards those 90 and 100 worlds. There's no way. I just found out that uh, I thought 100 would be the cap because it is actually pretty hard to do these worlds. There is all the way to 200 and uh, the uh, 1 to 100 is counted as low tier worlds. How hard is World 200, man? You have to be like the most insanely geared character to be able to do 200, I'm sure of it. Did my world just bug out? I think it actually did. I've repaired the portal and it's supposed to finish the bar as soon as you do that. It says that uh, you cannot progress until you've completed your main objective. There is literally no monsters left in this entire area. I can't do anything about this. That is uh, kind of unfortunate. Okay, I don't think there's any chance unless, very lucky, I'm going to make world 100. I am taking so much damage. Maybe if I bring a Pakyak, I could try it. Or maybe if I have a Vampirism Aura instead of having the Brawler one. But, um, yeah, it's currently on cooldown. I don't know if I feel like resetting it for a lot of points from the uh, boss shop. We will see, but uh, I do want to try to reach 100 somehow at least. I feel like to do the higher tier worlds, I have to do it with ranged, with the corruption shot, as well as having mechanized chinchompas and just long range all the enemies pretty much. But because I don't have either of those two, I am just going to do the lower worlds, farm some anima, I'm probably going to do 91 to 95, just grind those as much as I can with magic, get some magic and invention experience that way and unlock everything I want to do. That should be the best way of doing it, until I do get mechanized chinchompas as well as the corruption shot from raids. If I do worlds 85 to 95, aka 10 worlds in a row, I get 3 million anima plus a lot here when I open the chest in the end, all the way to or 12 million more anima. So running those 10 gives me 15 million and I have over, I guess, 100,000 now or do I have 90,000? I have enough at least to um, to buy the last ability. Let's go to the store real quick. And this is actually draining a lot of supplies for me. I have 103 million going to buy the Assault in the Wounds ability. So now we have both of the abilities unlocked and uh, these ones are not that impactful. I mean, aggression ability is like um, you use this and for only like 30 seconds or something Something like that uh, enemies are going to be aggressive to you and it's 90 million so it's pretty expensive I'm going to buy one of these just to try and see what the experience I get 70,000 almost so uh, running those 10 floors would be roughly two of these lamps and that would be like hundred and or hundred and how much is that hundred and thirty thousand hundred and forty thousand experience from uh, just 10 floors that's not too bad slayer experience I guess but uh, yeah, I'm actually going to stop here because I'm going to keep doing this uh, minigame when I do get that uh, range set up with the uh, corruption shot and the uh, mechanized chinchompas. But until then, I think it's just best to uh, wait. But I do have both the abilities unlocked now that I wanted to get. So when you unlock Salt in the Wounds, you also get Greater Dazing Shot, which is the same as a normal Dazing Shot, but it has the Puncture ability to it, as well as Salt in the Wounds is a threshold that consumes those Puncture stacks. So you can see there, deals an additional 18% ability damage for each stack of Puncture on the target. Reset the duration of the Puncture on the target. Does not remove any stacks of Puncture from the target. So. If you look at that ability, is it, it doesn't require any specific ranged weapons. You can have one hand, you can have two hand, doesn't matter. But for the greater dazing shot, which uh, applies a stack of puncture to the target that deals 8 to 10% ability damage every 1.8 seconds for 9 seconds. So decent bleed, but this one does actually require a two hand. So I will have to try this out with a royal crossbow. So I'm just going to use it like this. I guess I'll just apply this, doesn't matter that much and I use the, use the greater dazing shot. So now I have one stack of punctured and it deals uh, 40 or 18 damage, 9 damage, pretty low damage, but you can stack this up and for some reason it didn't stack there, but I guess I can just keep using it and it's going to stack. Oh, there we go. So two stacks and I can just keep doing this all the time and it stacks up to 10 times and you can see there that the dot is now increasing to 149 
And you can see now that salt in the wounds is usable because I've got 50% threshold. And uh, I am going to see if I can actually swap to my ascensions and then just use the puncture. Like this one, salt in the wounds. 5.6k from a threshold is not the greatest, but I guess um, it is pretty good if you're just using a Eldritch crossbow anyways. I'm not sure how good it is to swap between different weapons. Maybe it could be pretty good. Uh, but um, yeah, I am probably not going to do the switch of course because I have a royal crossbow to switch between So I'm most likely not going to be able to use this that much right now Let's just use the ascension crossbow there 5.6k and 10 stacks is taking for a lot like 400 damage Damn that is insane if you have the uh, eldritch crossbow and you consistently use this ability and keep the stacks up That could be some insane DPS. Oh, no way, dude. I got an offhand Ripper Claw. I'm just doing some Slayer now because uh, I want to get Corrupted Creatures as a task. Oh my god, that beam and Miner's Journal, I guess you get that when you do get a Ripper Claw. Jesus, is this- this is an offhand. I already have an offhand, but uh, if I get the main hand Kopesh, that is perfect actually. Oh my god, this tier 85 offhand is actually really good. And it is worth 1.5 million only, but that is deceptive because if I get a Kopesh and I have this as my offhand, it is actually a really good combo. A bit of a milestone, I guess, on the Corrupted Creature grind. 5,000 Corrupted Creatures killed. Let's just uh, do this. It's going to look pretty clean. 5,001 now. So uh, 3,000 more and then I am on the Kopesh drop rate. 109 Slayer. These levels are pretty far between each other because, uh, I mean, I need 3.6 million experience for the next level. But technically, I only really need one more Slayer level to be able to kill the Magister if I get some Wild Pies, which is not that hard to get. So, uh, yeah. One more level and we have reached at least the Slayer goal for the Kopesh grind. I have honestly been struggling to find groups for Beastmaster Dursag for those ability codexes. I still need all of them and they are so strong. But uh, I finally started guesting in Iron PVM. And I think it took me like 15 minutes and someone was making a group. So uh, it is probably an easy way to get raids done. So hopefully in the future videos and now I will get a good chance of getting some codexes. Look at that, 340 kill, that is uh, pretty fast actually, but I've never received a drop from this boss. So let's see if this is going to be the first time. It is not, and uh, I can reroll, can I reroll loot? No I can't, okay I don't have any rerolls. But um, yeah, 858 techie, like guess I'm banking that. I actually only have 5k because I recently spent like 6k on... Uh, Getting rumbling components, I bought an acto item, so uh, have quite a lot left before I can actually buy one of these codexes. But uh, I have to get uh, all of them; they are super good. Actually, maybe not the storm shards one. I think it's about time that I actually just point boost. I have 30 points now, and I want to stack up as many as possible and just skip tasks over and over to get as many corrupted creature tasks as possible. Do a bunch of them in a row and how I'm going to do that is just do the Lumbridge Slayer Master until a milestones like 629. I'll do the Lumbridge Slayer Master too and then I'll do one Lanikea task and then get the big point boost until I have a bunch of points and then I'll just start skipping when that is the case. What am I looking at? Super cow? A, a, a really? An elite mob for cows? Was that really necessary? Oh my god, look at this drop, man. So many cow hides. That's beautiful. Are these even useful anymore? I got a champion scroll that I kind of just ran away from. Uh, I guess maybe you get some type of achievement if you complete all of them. But uh, yeah, I don't think they're uh, maybe that useful. But it is a rare drop nonetheless. I'm pretty close to 700 tasks, but I'm going to start here at 1000 points and see how many corrupted creatures task. Well... There you go, first task, Corrupted Creatures, easy as that. But yeah, if I do 10 Corrupted Creatures tasks, I'm also going to get that 700 for uh, even more points. So uh, yeah, let's see how many Corrupted KC I can get. Corrupted Creatures, I now have, it should be around 5k, right? 5,311, so uh, let's see how many we can get 
from 5.3k in 1000 Slayer points by just skipping constantly for Corrupted Creatures only. For some reason I feel like Corrupted Creatures are so hard to actually get as a task even if they are the only task I have on Preferred. Look how many ca tasks I skipped. I had 1000 points and I had to skip all the way until 444 points or 443 points I mean. And uh, I still didn't get it. I got a Mithril Dragon task and I was like I, I'm going to just do this because it's so easy of a task. But um, yeah, it seems like I'm only going to get, unless very lucky, a very few amount of Corrupted Creature tasks. And that's with 1000 points. But of course, uh, if I go to that uh, 700 task streak, I'm going to get uh, even more points to spend on it. Oh my god, the second Corrupted Creature task. You can see how many points I still have left. This is rough. On the last chance I get Corrupted Creatures, but uh, yeah, three Corrupted Creature tasks from 1021 Slayer points. Ooh, that is uh, demotivating. But I guess it's back to normal Slayer for a while now, and I'm just getting that uh, magic experience on uh, whatever task I get now really to get closer to uh, 120, which I am very close to, 5.2 million experience left only, so that is definitely going to be something we get in the next video. And also 110 Slayer, most likely as well, which is the level I need. And we are at 6,000 Corrupted Creatures killed uh, just about, we're 5,958. So we are getting a bit closer to the Copage drop rate as well. I know that most of this video was just Shattered Worlds, it just turned out that way, but um, I hope you guys did enjoy it nonetheless. We did get some Slayer and some Corrupted Creatures and all that, and the chest is going to be so interesting to open because it is actually like the corrupted creature chest because it is actually really good money to do corrupted creatures it is one of the better money making methods in the game and it's only like that if you're on slayer task and all of those kills are on slayer task so i should have a really big chest to open that is going to be so much money and stuff for my iron man it's going to be so interesting to open it and um, yeah, that's pretty much the end of this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, leave a like. It really helps my videos get shown more. Or click any of the videos on the screen right now. Next one is going to be really nice because we're going to get that 120 magic cape. I can't wait to be one of the people that have that.